Welcome buddies, this is Tractor Beam. Today I'm going to be replacing the factory head unit with a new 4200 Nex and my 2005 Dodge Magnum. And this car does have a Boston Premium Audio, so that means it's going to have an amp built in down here. And I'm going to have to bypass that. Start by disconnecting the battery. This is what was on the other side, and I ended up having to like push from here and pull from here. And all this has to come off because it has to go on uh, on the new one because the new stereo will not fit in this area. So I got another one, and it's four screws holding this in. One, two, three plugs, and this one will just pull straight out. Maybe not. Okay. Right, so there's those two. Alright, to get to the amp, we have to take this off. Right here we got, this is the uh, parking brake release, pull that up, and it slides up. So this is the amp, and you can see right on the bottom there's a couple of plugs that have to be pulled out. So to get access to that I'm going to take off this little plate. This is a 10 millimeter. And there's two more on the other side in the same spot. So there's a plastic clip here. I'm just going to try to pop that out. So just like all the other ones, there's a little button you press in and then pull it down. And there's two of them. So what I have to do is I have to run the wires from here up to the stereo. And what I got to do that is this really long cord by Metro. This is a bypass cable designed just for this and uh, it's 20 feet long. Now, since it only has to go from the amp up to the stereo, I'm definitely not going to need all this. It's nice to have all this. I'm going to have a bunch of spare wire when I'm done. but. Uh, the idea is we're going to plug those two that we just pulled out into here and then run the other end up to the head and wire that up. And you can't really mess this up, the pins are completely different. Noticed on this one there's a bunch of wires coming in here on the left. All the wires covered here on the right, but we don't have them covered on the left. And if you look right here, we got the amplifier. Right there is the brake assembly, and I don't want to interfere with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires and I'm going to run them up and over the steering column just like that other wire is there. Now I'll 
attach it on the other side. So I'm going to take these ends and drop them down here. And this is what we're putting in. So a couple things about this, that I, one that I don't like is that there's two USB ports. So you could take that with a grain of salt, I guess, but one of them is for CarPlay, Apple, and the other one is for Android Auto. And you can only use the correct one for each item. So you can't plug the Android one into the uh, Apple Auto and make it work, which means I have to run two USB plugs out if uh, we're using two different manufacturers of phone. So now I'm going to just cut uh, some lengths that are workable, but that I can stuff back into here. All right. And these are all for speaker wires. Wow, I did a poor job on that. Well, we'll go. With, we'll we'll fix that later. Anyway, the ones I'm going to need are left front. I don't know what that is. Left front, so it's those two. Left rear, left rear, right rear, right rear. I don't know what that is. Right front and right front. And if you look closely at the wires, you'll see that they are labeled. It's kind of hard to see. Here's a good, good example. It's enough for you to be able to see it. Left front. So I need these four, and these four are going to connect to the harness for my stereo. They're all they're color coded the same. So you get the greens, the purples, the whites, and the grays. The wires that came from this Metro harness is uh, are much better than the wires that actually came from the Pioneer stereo. going to use to connect these together is this. These are little connections. Teach rink. In the middle it's got some solder uh, and then on the side it's got these seals. So it solders, it heat shrinks, and it seals all in one little package. some heat. It's better to use a uh, like one of those little heat guns, the tiny ones. They're more effective for this. I don't like it'll work. Oh, f I take it all back. Oh, that's a good connection. I burned the hell out of it, though. So, be better than me. I gotta go get that heat gun. And get pretty hot in this little spot.
this Metro harness has uh, three greens, so just make sure you grab the correct greens. takes care of all the speaker wires. All right, so I bought this and it came with this. I originally wasn't gonna use this. This is the, uh, the antenna wire. But it turns out that I do need it because the connection that goes in the back, is actually a shiesty little pin that goes inside there. So that has to plug into the antenna connection from the magnet. This is a non-standard connection. We'll be using this. Alright. And this. These wires are all the speaker wires, so I won't be using those. And on here, these two wires on the far right are the only ones that actually are uh, wired through, which means the blue. The red, the orange, and the brown over here are not going to be used. So all this means is that the only two wires I'm actually going to be using out of that are the black and the yellow. So I'm going to have a ground and I'm going to have a constant power. So the rest of these I'm just going to trim this exposed wire off. Hi, this is me from the future. I just wanted to interrupt what I'm doing to explain that this actually came with Metro Bypass harness. So I got this, I got a little red wire that I'm going to use later, and I got this. And I had originally just uh, ignored this on account of I figured it was for something else and it was like, oh, okay, they threw it in the package to account for all the models. But actually this is what I needed to use at this point in the video. So I purchased that other harness for $10 and it came with the antenna. I still need the antenna adapter, but I could have just used this. So I didn't actually need the harness that I got. And in fact, using that was uh, was a bad choice on account of all the extra wires that I had in here. I ended up having to wrap all that up. So buy the Metro Bypass harness, use this instead of what I used, and uh, get the antenna adapter separate. We got power, we got ground, we got speakers. So the next thing I want to make sure I get in is this parking brake bypass. And for that the green wire attaches to the parking brake, the blue wire attaches to the antenna, and then the black brake attaches to the ground. So on the radio wiring harness I've got system remote control. one is the black. So in the little manual for this uh, micro bypass they're saying don't use t-taps and it's probably just because it might fall out so I pulled the uh, I pulled my old ground apart so I'm gonna try to put three of them in one Sobe connector.
castle. So we've got all the speakers, we got that taken care of. The reverse I'm not really going to use yet because I don't have a reverse camera on here yet. Uh, the illumination, I don't think I'm going to be using that. And uh, that just leaves the mute, which I'm also not going to be using. And the accessory. So accessory, where does the accessory go? One place that I know of where I can put the accessory is right here in the cigarette lighter. Because this only turns on when I turn the key on. This will come off just by pulling it out. Then spin it up. Right here I've got my accessory. And for that I'm going to be using some T-taps. Not Wi-Fi. Using the blue ones. So this little metal slot is going to go around the wire. This will come around and it'll snap it into place and it'll strip the insulation down to the wire. It should click when it's secure. Well, maybe not. Maybe it'll just sit there. We got our accessory. So this came with that uh, the wire bypass, so or the amplifier bypass. So you, if you wanted to, you could fuse it. You would just drop this into the fuse and then run the wire off of that. And you could run that up to the uh, the stereo. But I'm just gonna use this wire for that. and then down below to this accessory. I don't need this tip on it. connect to the T-tap in this little connection we just made by pushing it in. Now we have accessory. component okay. so the weird part here is I've got a whole lot of extra wires all right I've got uh, I've got all this which doesn't count so these are the only ones that are actually connected which means that all of this mess, which uh, is at least one of those plugs, doesn't really matter. So I can probably pull that out from underneath, but I'm not sure if I can do that yet. So first I'm going to connect the stereo, uh, turn the car power back on, and see if it turns on. If it does, then I'm going to yank all this stuff out. Okay. 
got something. Shuts off. So everything's good. Kinda. Mostly. So what that means is that all of these wires that aren't connected to the harness can go. So out of these two plugs, disconnect that. can confirm none of these wires from this one were used. You only need the one plug, which is kind of nice. Probably would have made things easier at this point. Okay. Which means that I've got two wires from the other one that were not used. I'm just going to snip those. Okay. I've got a heck of a mess. I'm gonna tape this up. This is some cloth tape. I'm gonna leave you know, all the stuff that I use in the description. So if you say, "Hey, I like that," you can know, go right to it. And plus, it'll be an affiliate link, which means if you buy something, I'll make a little money. So that'd be nice. once again be better than me. just in case I ever need to use them. A mute I will never use because that basically if you have a button on your uh, car to mute it then you can use that but this car doesn't so. Alright so these three wires are going to stay up. The rest of this is going to get taped up a bit. Give it a take. This is a similar kind of tape to what they use from the factory to, to keep everything nice and neat. That's why it's a good one to use. This black cloth tape doesn't really matter. These two wires are unused. I'm waiting on just clipping these. Like, for some reason, I might use this cable in another install on another car someday. I doubt it, but I don't know. I guess I'll keep it. Oh, these four wires. How about that? a little better. Question is, does this fit in here? I think I'm gonna have to take that out also. Let's 
there does not fit in here and it needs to go deeper than what this will allow so I have to take this white plastic piece out so if you're doing this just start by doing that Definitely more room. And to fit this in, we have to take all of this stuff off. Okay, that just comes right out. Got the same thing up here for this. This guy is now empty of all components. And with the new one, you can see the configuration is a little different. The, uh, on the bottom, where the original one had a tray to stick stuff in, this one does not. So you lose a little bit. It's got these little pieces of plastic to protect it. This is just going to sit on here. That's good fit. And then uh, I'm gonna jam into that. Let's start with this. Make sure we're facing up still. It's on here. See. Seems to be a good fit. And that's what the new one looks like. Not too bad. So with this uh, bezel came these clips. There's six of them. And they go on each of these little clip areas. There. So you can kind of see what they look like. And these are going to push onto these tabs. Just like that. Two. Two on the top. One. And one over here. And what happens with this is you put this on here these little trays will fit into slots in the back right. and then you screw them into the sides mounting points based on how strong they look there's a lot of them that have little narrow slots like here 
wouldn't want to put a screw there because it could break. It looks like I'm going to be using one anyway right up here. And then I'm going to plug it all in. So next up we got the Bluetooth microphone. I don't know why they call it a Bluetooth. It's a wire. I'm guessing it's because... Yeah, never mind. So we're going to put that up here, install it across and down the A, a pillar. And I'm going to take this, this is going to have to go in about like that, I guess like that, and run the wire through it so that it doesn't, eventually if you just left it like this it would dangle and everything would fall out. We don't want that so hook it in. I guess from the other side. And we'll just put it right up here. Right in the center. Right here. Now this just pulls forward. Right there in this corner, it pinches it tight. As long as we got it there, we're all right. Pull this back to where we want it. So you can see right here, I've got insulation and there's a clip. So I just press it in right behind that clip so that clip will help hold the wire. And the third clip over here. Guaranteed to be a better way to do this than what I'm doing. But I don't know any better currently, so this is what I'm attempting. Alright. That should be showing down beneath the dash at this point somewhere. Alright, so there it is. And I pulled it down just a little bit. And you can see right about there where it came down. So it's a pretty tight fit. Okay, good to go there. I'm going to run that over the amp. And I'm going to run that right through spot as those wires right over the steering column there you go you can see the steering column all the wires headed over top of that uh, that top bracket I'm gonna zip tie them all to that top wire Now we got our microphone. And we can just put the A pillar back in. Okay. And next time we put in this guy.
The next thing I have to work on is this USB port and I have to figure out a place to put this. It's got this three foot cord and uh, it's long enough hopefully that I can reach from my console hopefully up back behind the stereo. I'm going to find that out right now. Plug this in. I want to run down into here. So as long as I can run this cord inside here, I'll be good. And by the length, it looks like it'll be close, but it should just make it. So you get in there, this little cover comes out, and there's two screws here. I can see one there, and one over here. this guy up and get it kind of out of the way. This should just pop up. So if you look in the console, you can see this little rubber end. Let's just right, this pulls up. And then we've got three, three little nuts that we have to pull out. All right, so now it's time to drill. I'm gonna be putting a one and one eighth inch hole it's going to be sitting in about two inches. All right. Too late to go back now. So I'm gonna put these on through. Alright. That looks pretty good. So you can kind of see what that looks like now. And you can see I got one more here for the HDMI and the auxiliary. So I'll put that one right here. The auxiliary cord is not as stiff, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie it, and I'm going to use the HDMI to pull it through. This one has this little cover on it, right? And if I want to use that, I need to put that on the other side of the wire. Right. There we go. I'm 
coming from back here up to the front we've got our four cords so now this ring goes onto the back of those and locks it down so I'm gonna feed it through these wires stick it down in here when I undid those three bolts on the other side so I can lift this up just a bit and hopefully I'll be able to get underneath and tighten them on. So just to show you what I did, I lifted this up and I stuffed my arm under here. It gave me enough room to grab it and twist it on while I held it from the front and lined it up. Alright, so now it's time to put those bolts back in. Not too bad. So we got cigarette lighter over there. USB and the HDMI and aux. Alright, now when we get to this point we got these wires and we need to run them across here. Obviously there's a lot of moving parts and we really don't want this to be messed up or interfered with. So I'm going to try to run wires the same as they did, which is underneath this, and this is just the, uh, the tube that blows hot or cold air to the rear. So if we run it underneath this, we should be, uh, we should be safe with the other wires. And I'm going to try to get, because I want to tape these up, but if I do, I might not be able to fit it underneath here very well. So I'm going to try to push it underneath and then tape it when I get past that so that they all stick together. So I'm going to start about here and I'm going to tape these up. Alright, well I guess that'll be good enough anyway. Good enough for a start. We definitely don't want this button to be interfered with. You gotta get it at least past that. some more linkage and we want to get on the other side of that so follow the wires there all right so that looks pretty good put this stuff down underneath a little more if we can yeah all right looking good there then we can just run underneath this plate over here. Wow, that is a close call. That's just enough to plug into the back. USBs, my HDMI, and my auxiliary right here. So the problem is going to be I'm going to have to be able to plug that in with the radio right here, basically. So I can't pull this out any. If you can find a cable that's uh, four feet, that would probably make your life a lot easier. Three feet will do it. Four feet is better. So looking on the back, the auxiliary goes here. The uh, HDMI goes right in here. And then the two USBs go here. Whew. 
And so uh, I got some extensions for these. There's a little one foot extensions. These are little short cables. It's more than a foot, it's like a foot and a half. So I'm gonna have a little more to reach here. Now this is good and bad. It's good because I'm gonna have more room, but it's bad because uh, the more length you add, the more distortion there's gonna be, and plus the more connections, uh, the more points of possible failure, so. I'm doing this with a, uh, but a big amount of hope. This is just a one foot 3.5 jack. And two USBs. Make sure you got a one cord on top, three on the bottom. So one of these ports is going to be CarPlay and the other one is uh, Android Auto and I don't really know which one is which. So I'm going to try the top one first. the Apple CarPlay. Who do you want to call? Testing. Nope, I can hear you fine. Oh, that's nice. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, there you go. That's very nice. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Oh, good, I can do my Amazon Music straight on there. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to disconnect this. the Android. Please stop your car and check your Android phone. Welcome to Android Auto. Okay. Now we've got Android Auto. Who did? Who did? I don't know. I don't know. Bye-bye. <laughs> so all of that works.
I'm going to plug the auxiliary cable into the top of the phone. I'm going to plug the other end into the car. There you go. So, the auxiliary works. Alright, so the last part is we've got one of these HDMI outs for a phone. I've got HDMI cable, so I'm going to plug this into the card uh, in the HDMI slot. So I got that plugged in. Plug this in. Oh, I need power right there. That's okay. I got power right here. Power here. Okay. And then the phone. There you go. Neat. Cool. Cool. So if worse comes to worse and you really want to use an app, or watch a YouTube video or something that NAP doesn't work for on CarPlay or anything else. You can use the HDMI. And next we're going to install this E-Rapta backup camera. So that's going to go right here where the license plate sits. As you can see, there's already a nice hole right here, so I don't have to drill one. But I do have to take off the rear bumper. So up here, you can see I got a hook right here, and that's just a Phillips screw. And there would normally be one right here also, but off a long time ago. So it just comes off like that. And uh, then you would do that one. And this guy pops right off. We can take this off. And that shouldn't come off like that, but apparently it does. Okay. And we got a couple of these caps. This is just a little puller for these little uh, snaps. No difference whatsoever. Pull up that little cap and then that comes out. So that's how that should work. Now one more right here. those. Get this out of the way. Right here we got more of these little snappies. Alright. So uh, I would argue buy more of these little guys. Break out the big guns. There we go. That's better. It did not appreciate that. And one bolt, I'm using a 932nd. Fairly certain it's supposed to be a seven millimeter. And on the other side, more of the same. That's just how they're supposed to be. And here should slide off. And note the tire that I have underneath. So if you look right in there, there's a screw, Philip said. So I'm going to take that out. And that should just pull.
that gives me plenty of access back here now. What I'm trying to get to is this plug right behind the bumper. And that's right back here. You know, I totally could just go in through that vent right there. I mean, it leads right in here. Why couldn't I? Of course I can. Well, an easy way would be to go in here. And just run it around the bumper right through here, and that would go inside. But I think I might try to go in through this grommet, because that's where wires are supposed to go. I'm going to try to take off this tape and see if I can get something through the grommet. Like that's a real possibility. I'm going to try to push it from the inside out there. <laughs> Boy, yeah, that's not going to work. Simply, it's too big. Too big. Got a big man and a little coat. Right through the vent. You can see right there, that's where the wire's coming in. I'm going to run that uh, down. Not over the battery, but I'm going to try to run it around here and up through that harness and follow it up. Alright, before I get too deep into that, figure out how I'm going to mount this and I'm guessing because the wire is coming out the top that's the top push this up through the hole and on the other side the wires come to about here so I'm going to get bringing this you can you have to wire the black to a ground and the red to a power you can either use the accessory which means as soon as you turn the car on it'll uh, it'll turn the camera on but the camera will stay on all the time which means that even if you're driving away from the Sun the camera is always going to be recording that and you'll bring your camera out quicker I'm gonna hook this up to the reverse light and then this wire here is gonna essentially be the same all right so for right now I want to test and see which wire Which wire is what? So there's, there's one, two, three, four, there's five wires, so black, which is the ground. I'm gonna stick this in the ground. Okay. Alright, go ahead and hit the brake. Alright, so the brake light's on. There we go. Okay. So can confirm that uh, that green with a white stripe is brakes. So turn the brakes off. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Go ahead and start the car. All right. Make sure your foot is on the brake because I'm right back here and I need you to put it in reverse. Okay. There we go. Okay. Put it back in park. All right. Back in reverse back in park okay good black is ground and on the other side white with a green stripe the light green stripe is reverse in the middle so it goes uh, uh, just the one directly in the middle this one here in the middle right that's the one that you need so this wire that goes off the video I need to join that this power run that up to the reverse light so I can either join it here I guess it'd be right around here and either t-tap it here and then run this up to the uh, reverse light or extend this and then join them both together in the t-tap
green stripe. White with a green stripe. These are some pretty brittle wires. Black to black. And light green to red. If I had to do this over again, I would have set this T-tap uh, much closer so it would have more, more length of red wire. So right in here in the bumper, there's a, a track. I'm going to try to just follow it in that track. And right here we got another wire, and this is the existing wire. I'm just gonna tape this, or let's actually zip tie this to here so that they hold on. Cinch up this wire just a bit so it doesn't drag or get caught in the exhaust somewhere. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to put it through a higher hole. This onto here. So now it's time to put the bumper back on. You can see these slots right here are going to line up with these lineup pins right here. So there's some on this side and some on the other side. Just pick it up, line it up with those, and push it in. It is definitely easier said than done. This little 
the plug actually goes right in here. I feel that at some point. So I'm not going to be able to reuse these because these are destroyed. Alright, I got this uh, pack of clips. I'm going to be needing a lot of them because I broke a lot of them. Some new clips. Got the wire hanging right here, and there's a little channel here. So I'm gonna let it go down through the channel as much as possible. And the battery. Definitely don't want it interfering with the battery. So you can see where that screw goes right here. And there's another one in that back corner. It's gonna go right here. And just so you can see that final screw goes right here. Now this little guy Time to take the seat out. It's right here. So you can just grab it and lift it up. Reaching from behind, I just reached also through here, and I was able to grab it and pull it all the way through. So um, I got that all right under here. I'm gonna try to feed it under this channel to go the rest of the way. itself just screw it in with your license plate the original harness goes underneath the carpet and then it follows along here so to get to that I would have to pick up this seat and I don't feel like doing that so I'm gonna try to go 
through here. Now by the passenger side front. Okay. This one's at kind of an angle. And just kind of push it along the bottom. And just grab it and pull it through here. Looks like I'm gonna have plenty of cable too, so that's nice. Stuff it behind here. Make sure this is pulled up behind here. There we go. All right. So underneath the glove compartment, there's this little foam thing and there's a clip right there. And there's another one on the other side. So I'll pop these two clips and that'll come down. Yeah, I think there was supposed to be one here also, but uh, I don't talk about that one. Okay, so if we come on in, see all this wiring. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it up here. I'm gonna run it forward to that wire in the back. That wire right there. I'm gonna run it across, and then I'll have access to come forward. Right up to the stereo. So I got this uh, wire worm. This one's way too long for my particular use. It's okay. I'll make it undo some of it. That should be enough. Work, work. And let's get it down. Got it. Turn it to the bottom. But I need it. Bring it up to the top. Back here you got four ports. The brown one says BC in, so I assume that means backup camera in. Alright. Which leaves me with this red wire. 
which is going to tell my stereo, the head unit, when I'm in reverse. So I need to splice these two wires together. Should be it. Let's plug it into the correct spot. Hey, all right, we got him. So taking a good look at this, that's uh, not good at all. All right, so you can see what we got, and the lines are way up. So uh, I'm going to rotate them down a little bit, just like that. Yeah, that's a little better. So putting the car in reverse, I found that it wasn't automatically switching. The video does work, which means that this yellow cable is good, but the red cord started checking that just to see if I was getting any voltage and uh, I'm getting no voltage which means that somewhere between here and the back of the car uh, there's a there's a break in the connection so no good so I'm gonna have to run that over again oh well So I did some testing, and underneath, on the passenger side, are all these plugs, and this one in the very back contains the reverse uh, power. Grab that and pull it to the side, i show you how easy it is. Right there. So there we are. That's the one I need. So I'm just going to tap that from here instead of running all the way to the back of the car. Okay, so I took this remainder of uh, what was my Metro harness and I cut off this length of purple wire to match the, the parking color of the stereo. Somewhere over here. Get this as low as I can. Okay. This is uh this is a good wire. I mean it's not awesome, but this is this is by far the best wire that I've touched on this damn car. Clip down. Okay. 
and oh, I got my new purple wire. Let's go ahead and zip tie that on. Alright, since I've already got the video cable going through, I'm just going to pull it back a bit and then tape on. So I got the black and the purple tape together. I'm going to pull the video back through. Now I got both cables. We're not using the red part of the video cable. I'm gonna just snip that. I could cut the whole thing off, but I might find a use for it one day. I doubt it, but I'm just gonna tape it together. Cool, man. Come on. There we go. So that purple is going to connect to this purple. Okay. Connected. silly to tape these little tags in. That's what I'm doing anyway. Okay, it works. Alright. I'm done. One more like that for over here. So I got these clips. Yeah, it looks like it's about the same size as the old one. And this guy. Push in. Clip down this trim. This just pushes. All right. So next up, I'm going to be updating the firmware on the head, and to do that, you have to go to Pioneer's website, uh, support downloads. So just go here. Go to I don't remember. Go to just Google it. I don't care. 
but uh, then type in your model number because there's there's a lot of models or you could do a control F and type in uh, you know your model number 4200 but it's critical that you get the correct one because if you get uh, if you download this and try to put it on there it could mess up your head units so we got the 4200 next and uh, the newest one is 1.07 so hit that I agree of course read all that because it's critical and then wait for it to download all right then click here show in folder and you should get something that looks like this now this is a zipped file this isn't gonna work so right click on it hit extract all and that's gonna put it right in the same path and then it's gonna extract Right, so we can close that now you can see right here like this is the new file that it created so open that up and this is the file that you need so there's a bunch of stuff in it but we need to copy this so right click hit copy then we need to put in a USB stick all right and then open it automatically but uh, if it doesn't just go to file explorer find your USB stick and there it is so there's a bunch of stuff on here and we have to get rid of all that. So control A and delete. Right. So now this is empty. So if you right click on it, properties, make sure that it's in FAT32 or FAT16. If it's not, right click on it and go to format. And whatever the capacity is, just leave that alone. And the file system would be FAT32. And then hit start. Mine's already in FAT32, so I'm going to leave it. And then copy this folder. It has to be this folder, not this one. So make sure you copy this and paste it onto here. And uh, keeping in mind, this would be a lot faster if I was using a USB 3.0, but this is just a USB 2.0, so it's going to take a little while. It'll still work, so if it's all you got, go ahead and use it. But uh, if you've got a better stick, just go ahead and use it. All right, now that it's done, go down to uh, the arrow, find your USB, eject mass storage. So make sure you're ejecting the correct one. And unplug the USB stick. And uh, first thing you want to do is make sure the source is off. So source off settings that one system and system information firmware information mine's 1.06 as of today the newest is 1.07 so we'll be updating it and the other one you can check is bluetooth oops yeah bluetooth version information 34113 so my bluetooth is updated but my uh, my firmware is lagging behind, and the only update in this version is a uh, an Apple CarPlay update. All right, so it's settings, system, and system information, firmware update. And now I'm gonna uh, I'll plug in my USB. All right, continue. reading please wait for a while uh, even if you think this is taking too long don't mess with it don't don't pull out the USB just wait all right warning failure to update may result in product damage please read the following carefully do not disconnect USB do not drive the car do not turn off the engine do not reset the product so hit start and wait So it says, if update is aborted by power failure, please repower the product and wait for its auto recovery, which means that it's got some kind of a, uh, a recovery mechanism, which is nice. Uh, because otherwise you would, uh, you just brick it, which this could still brick it. But uh, the fact that it has something that will save it in the event of a disaster is nice. 
update complete 106 to 107 press home to reset the product Now we can take out the USB. And throughout all that, there's gonna be a lot of times where you're gonna feel like it hung. It's uh, like it's taking too long. Just wait, because you can only screw it up by being impatient. So the dimmer settings. Now, I didn't uh, I didn't hook up the the illumination to this thing. So from the default, it might be extremely bright during the night. So if you set the dimmer trigger to just time then it's going to automatically dim it uh, based on the time of day. So you don't even need to have that wire hooked up. Yeah, Woo. that's pretty bright. So make sure you put it on time. So this is what it sounds like. It sounds pretty bad. And it comes out of both front speakers. Back speakers sound fine. So, you can see I already got it, two of these off, and uh, this one I didn't even have to take off. But, easy way to get these things out is to push the center in a little bit and then pull it out, and it just pulls right out. So, you gotta do these two, and then there's Three Phillips underneath the door. All right, so there's one, uh, one, two, and three. There's a Phillips at the bottom here, and another one of those plugs here. There's two more screws. One of them is in this little port here. Inside here, there's three pins, one, two, three, and these two you lift out of, and this one you pull forward from. So you need to lift this side and then pull it out. And so you can see what this is supposed to look like. This rod right here, you just pull this back. There we go. And then this rod just pulls right up. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be problem than I thought so I'm gonna just take out these connections and they're not that complicated just a squeeze and pull all right so the uh, short one goes on the far side and the long one goes on the near side and then the white one connects to the white board sounds like everybody came out to play like oh hey man he's making a video might be actually positive and the white could be negative uh, because supposedly this was wired incorrectly. Got gray and purple and gray and yellow. Gray and purple is currently on the black. So let's plug this in. is weak so I think this is wired wrong. Okay. Now with 
they reversed. I wouldn't call that great, but it does sound a lot better. It looks like I got one of them out, so... Uh, what I ended up doing was jamming it from the front and pushing it down here and then pulling the wire out the back. So I'm grabbing it from just underneath the wire and then pulling it down. There we go. All right. So then the black one is where the white one was and the white one is where the black one was. Speakers came with these longer screws. I'm gonna see how they fare. And at the moment, I'm gonna attempt to just kind of even it up. This was starting to uh, stretch back, I assume because of this screw was running right into the metal. It's shorter Torx. There's got to be people that have been doing this for a while looking at this saying what the hell is wrong with him. So I'm going to drill this. This is at kind of an angle, or it, uh, it goes that way as it comes up. I need to use the torque bolts, the shorter torque bolts at the top and the long bolts at the bottom. But if it's good news, it looks like that'll work, so it's, that's good news. So I was just looking here where I pushed that clip through so it fell inside the, uh, the metal part of the door. And to get to that we would have to pull this forward but it looks like it's glued. Right, there's glue right there. So if I rip this off I would have to glue it back on. Which isn't a big deal but I don't want to do it. Someone's going to get new clips. Got the white cable. The big orange. See if these three white clips, that's what is going to hang with the door on. Get the door lock. I'm going to line up these pins. So in my attempt to get this off, I ended up breaking it. And uh, what I should have used is something like this, this little pry bar. Just fit it in there and pop it up. But since I didn't, I ended up breaking the end off. I'm going to try and squeeze onto it. And I got these replacements by UXO. And these will just stick right inside there. So I'm going to pull this one without breaking it. Yeah. Alright. So I'm going to fit these right in here. And I got these new clips by Autex.
This one I'm going to try to just pull it straight forward so I can pull those, uh, those caps out, those uh, clips. Hey, Gummer. 